So the question was, why would we want it, want a tube that connects your ear to your throat? Um, because you can maybe choke easily. Well, it doesn't have something to do with choking. That's a good guess. Let's think about this. All right. Okay. You are going up in an airplane. Yeah. All right. Pressure way up in the airplane is a lot less air pressure than it is on the ground. Okay? So when you're on the ground, yeah, we're talking about airplanes. When you're on the ground, pressure is really high. When you go up in the airplane, airplane pressure gets really low. When you go up in the airplane, the pressure inside your middle ear is still high, even though the outside pressure is low. That causes a lot of pain. You know when your ears hurt when you go in the airplane? You know when it kind of like feels uncomfortable and then you have to yawn? Well, when you yawn, that opens up your auditory tube and it allows that excess pressure to escape out, which allows your pressure in your middle ear to be equal to the pressure on the outside. All that does is happens again, you have to yawn again. Yeah, and you keep having to yawn, right? Same deal if you go to the bottom of the pool. You go to the bottom of the pool, your ears start hurting, right? Right? Deep pool, like 10 foot pool. Well, what's going on there is the pressure outside your ear is greater than the pressure inside, and so you can grab your nose and you can cause it to equalize. No. Yeah, come here. All right. No, no. Then, no, okay. No, 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 Daddy. Yeah. The, the coat's this big. Yeah, you got big ears. That's good. All right, now, so, this, when you get fluid in here, like after you have a nasty cold, some of that no. snot and mucus will escape through your auditory tube. That big. Yeah. And it'll cause an infection to occur right here in your middle ear. Those are nasty. You got used to have a ton of those when you were a kid, Cam. So much, in fact, that we had to get a little tube installed right here in your tympanic membrane that allowed all that extra fluid to drain out. Wait. Is it still in there? No, it fell out. So all that fluid would drain out, and it looked like one of those spools that holds wire, like at a, a construction site, one of those big spools. A, a surgeon went into your ear, made a little cut into your tympanic membrane. Wait, is that bad, like a bug or something? Or what's a that? Or cut, that's all thing in my ear. You're a doctor did it. A doctor went in there, made a cut, put that spool in there with a little hole in it, so all that fluid could drain out. Those things stayed in your ear for about a year. You didn't get any more ear infections, and then it finally popped out. And now you're good. Typically, some kids like you, when you're really young, your auditory tubes are very small, and they're like bent, so they don't drain properly. That's why you needed tubes. As you got older, it got bigger, and it wasn't um, a problem, okay? Now, okay, so that's the middle ear. Now, let's talk about the last part of your ear and this is the inner ear all right kind of looks like this so and I'll tell you what happens here in a second so on the other side of the stapes the stapes makes um, this little oval like structure and this oval like structure connects to the inner ear and this inner that oval like structure is called the oval window <clears throat> okay. Now on the other side of that, let me draw it out real quick. All right. So on the other side of that oval window, you've got a series of fluid-filled structures that actually have the pretty big job of converting these vibrations that are trapped carried by the bone into brain signals in the form of action potentials. Okay, this large structure up here, okay, it has two parts, all right, this whole structure um, from here to there, this guy is called the vestibule, right, and the vestibule consists of two different smaller compartments, the first smaller compartment, which is, connects right on to the oval window, this first compartment, this is called the saccule. And this larger compartment is called the utricle. Okay. Now this coiled up structure right here that looks like a big snail, that is called the cochlea. All right. 
Now just to give you an overview and I'll kind of go into detail. Oh, and one more, these arch looking structures, we have three of them. These guys are called the semicircular canals. Just to give you an idea of what happens, this stapes beats on the oval window like a plunger. That transmits those vibrations into the fluid that fills the inner ear. Okay, these sound waves are encoded into action potentials in the cochlea. We'll talk about how that happens a little later. Up here, these are the structures. The vestibule encodes um, acceleration that happens along a linear plane, whereas the semicircular canals, those allow us to feel acceleration that happens um, due to rotation. So the vestibule allows us to sense the position of our head and um, the, position, yeah, the position of our head and body, whereas the semicircular canals, those come active like when you're on a merry-go-round, when you're spinning around, okay?